legendary rock star Frank Zappa famously remarked that you cannot call yourself a country unless you own an airline and a beer. To those two concise requirements, however, you can now add a third, you must have attempted to build a supercar. It's astounding how many businesses have emerged from countries without a history of automobile production, all claiming to have cars that could challenge the supercar industry. But as Croatia's Rimac has shown with its recently announced joint venture with Bugatti, the potential rewards are enormous. Hi guys, welcome to Finest Vehicles. Today we will look at insane supercars you've never heard of. Number 10. The Sid R1. Bulgaria takes home the prize for the most intriguingly named manufacturer. The name Sin Cars evokes images of cars that are both seductive and menacing. Additionally, Sin has a connection to Britain because it was founded in 2012 and later moved to Germany and Bulgaria, the hometown of founder Rosen Daskalov. With a space frame chassis and Corvette V8 engines that can produce up to 650 horsepower when supercharged, the R1 is a lightweight two-seater car. Another option is a hybrid with 755 horsepower. The fastest or one variant can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds, making for a potentially sinful driving experience. Number 9. The Zenvo ST1. With brands like Volvo, Saab, and, at the top of the market, Koenigsegg, neighbor Sweden has had a major influence on the automobile industry, but Denmark has had considerably less to brag about. Zenvo Automotive, based in Denmark, is striving to rectify this situation by providing a range of twin supercharged supercar models that typically have power exceeding 1,000 horsepower and cost more than $1 million. Number 8. The Marussia B1. Fans of motorsport will be familiar with the name Marussia after the team's brief foray into Formula One from 2012 to 2014 which tragically ended with driver Jules Bianchi's death from injuries he suffered at the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix. The group was effectively a division of Moscow-based Marussia Motors, which made its name with the B1 in 2008. Designed to compete with the Lamborghini Gallardo and Ferrari 458 Italia, the mid-engine two-seater had three engine options from Cosworth. A 3.5-liter V6 engine with 300 horsepower and a twin-turbo 2.8-liter V6 engine with 360 or 420 horsepower. Its weight was kept to 1,100 kilograms thanks to carbon fiber panels and an aluminum tub. Even though Marussia Motors began with a bang, its publicity machine eventually stalled, and by 2014, the company had folded. Number 7. The Argyle Turbo GT. Although Scotland has a long history of technological innovation, the country has never been a pioneer in the manufacture of exotic cars. In the late 1970s, a maverick from La Gilpaid named Bob Henderson attempted to alter this with this mid-engine 2 plus 2. Since Henderson built custom cars, a range of V6 and V8 engines were available, though their power outputs were never disclosed. Sales of the Argyle were poor because it was expensive and heavy, about 1,500 kilograms, compared to a Porsche 911 at the time. However, it's a credit to Henderson that his car ever made it into the public eye considering that the project was privately funded. Number 6. The Arinara Hasaria. The Hasaria, which translates to cavalry from ancient Polish, was a big deal when Arinara supercar was revealed in 2013. It had all the makings of a successful vehicle. A 6.2-liter V8 engine producing 641 horsepower, a top speed of 211 miles per hour, and a construction composed of carbon fiber and Kevlar. Unfortunately, the car did not go on sale. Co-founder Lukasz Tomkovich, however, revealed to Auto Express that he is developing a 2,000-horsepower EV but it won't be released until battery technology allows for a true 500 kilometers or 310 miles of range. Number 5. The Hume Can AM. The Hume Can AM, a carbon fiber mid-engine roadster with a 600 horsepower Chevrolet V8, represented the Kiwi's attempt at supercar fame and was named after world champion F1 driver Denny Hume, who was born in Motueka, New Zealand, in 1967. The Kinaam Spider was a true lightweight, weighing in at about 980 kilos. This resulted in an amazing driving experience. 
The immediate thump in the back that results from giving the throttle a good poke in any gear is nearly as startling as the accompanying sudden bellow, a journalist stated. With a price tag of slightly less than $300,000, it's unclear how many, if any, of Hume's plans to build and sell 20 Can-Ams were able to find buyers. Number 4. The Onuxazen. The Onuxazen was another supercar that made a big splash and held great promise when it debuted in 2009. Ekber Onuk of the company Onuk, a speedboat manufacturer based in Istanbul, gave the car its name and design as a memorial to his son Khan Sezen Onuk, who passed away in a road accident in 1996. This makes Onuk's history with the car very interesting. It was claimed that there would be two engine options, a turbocharged Nissan V6 with up to 450 horsepower and a Chevrolet Corvette sourced V8 tuned to about 520 horsepower. Prototypes of the vehicle with a hint of a TVR were produced. Like many supercar stories, this one ended quietly, although the company is still active on the internet. Number 3. The Tushek Renovatio T500. In 2011, the former Yugoslavian Republic launched the $1.4 million Shaitan Equilibrium, a rival to the Pagani Zonda that was announced with great fanfare but never made it past the financing stage. The car was aimed at the upper end of the market. Therefore, the Renovatio's ability to enter production was a step forward. Compared to the Equilibrium, the $300,000 price tag of the Renovatio seemed like a good deal, and you got a rather stylish sports car with a 4.2-liter Audi RS4 engine that produced 444 horsepower, making it suitable for both the racetrack and the road. After being founded by Slovenian racer Aljosa Tušek, the business changed its name to Tušek and Spiegel Supercars, and it is currently rumored that a 1333 horsepower hybrid hypercar is in the works. Number 2. The Venser Sart. The market for supercars has seen a few attempts from the Dutch. Spiker had a turbulent life, but the $250,000 Venser Sart was perhaps a more interesting model. This 622-horsepower carbon fiber machine was developed by former plumber Robert Cobbin. His goal was to build a supercar that could be used on a daily basis without the need for electronic assistance. With a supercharged GM V8 tuned by Hennessy at its core, the Sart garnered favorable reviews in 2014. However, not much more has been seen or heard about it since. And now, for number one, the Loraki Epitome. Laraki, a company founded in 1999 by wealthy car importer Abdeslam Laraki, was at the forefront of Africa's attempts to create supercars. Following brief forays into the construction of yachts and coaches, the company made its debut in the automotive industry in 2005 with the release of the V12 Bora Grand Tour. However, Laraki's astounding epitome at the 2013 Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance was what really made her famous. With its striking custom design and 1,200 horsepower twin turbocharged Corvette V8, it was sure to draw attention from all over the world, especially considering its $2 million price tag. Which one would you like to own? Give your opinion in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Then please like and subscribe for more of the best new vehicle videos here at Finest Vehicles.